just love this. Me too. I love the warmth of the sunset upon my face. And the birds. I could just sit here forever. Well, maybe not forever. Figure of speech. A bit of hyperbole. It'll be getting cool soon. Fall is here. Ooh, there's a nip in the air. Planning on staying indoors for the winter? And miss our bench rendezvous? Never. Perhaps a cup of cocoa to ward off the cold. Hmm. Or a nip of another kind? Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Snedeker. Fine pace, Mr. Snedeker, but don't overdo it. You're not as young as you once were. Well, none of us are. None of us are, Mr. Snedeker. One more lap to go. Oh, how I wish we could run the trail around the lake. Yes, but some things are not meant to be. Do you miss it? What, running? No, <laughs> all the things we might have done, all the things we can't do. No, you make it sound like we're invalids or cripples. I didn't mean, oh, you know. Oh, indeed I do. You meant we're a pair of old birds, old biddies, with little hope left for the future, at least not for us. That's not what I meant, and you know it. All I meant was, do you miss the little things that slowly, almost imperceptibly change, disappear? I suppose, a little bit, but they're replaced by so many wonderful things. Arthritis, constipation, dementia. No, new friendships, a little more wisdom perhaps and greater appreciation for things like the sunset. Perhaps. Bonjour, ladies. Uh, my dear be room on your bench for one more? Well, there very well might be, providing that that one more is a gentleman. Uh, ladies, I can assure you my intentions are honorable and my thoughts are pure. Well, shit. Evelyn! Well, that's how I feel. Purity and innocence, fine. Uh, but a bit of excitement wouldn't hurt. A whole lot of excitement. Now, that gets my ticker going. I am at your disposal, as you would have me. Then you might as well join us. Hark it, Buster. Uh, this is Anna, and I'm Evelyn. And I am charmed. And I'm getting a bit worried, dubious. Oh, uh, no need to be. My name is Francois, Francois Archambault. A plaisir, monsieur, enchanté. Uh, nice to meet you, Frank. Oh, I thank you for sharing with me this lovely afternoon, cette belle après-midi. It is lovely, isn't it? A day to treasure. Peace. <laughs> yes, a flock. Do you not wonder why they fly as they do? As they do? Yes, in such a formation, the symmetry. <laughs> Amazing. Symmetry? Yes. Is it not a sight to behold? A sight. To behold? I'm afraid it isn't. Uh, Not uh, for us. Uh, how can you say that? Such beauty against a sky shaped with colors that almost defy description? Then they are beyond us. Oh, I don't understand. Anything beyond the description you provided is beyond us. We're blind, sightless. Blind. The beauty 
that you see that you so eloquently shared is beyond our appreciation, our comprehension. I am sorry. I, I didn't. Oh, well, you, I mean, no, I, you're not the first. No apology necessary. Many people fail to notice. I think Anna and I have become so comfortable with our surroundings and our lack of sight that we fail to call attention to ourselves. I, I can honestly say I, I never would have guessed. Then let's drop the subject. Our lack of sight doesn't define us. Please. And besides, of course. while that one sense well, is beyond us, our other senses are heightened, or so they tell us. For instance, do you know the school has had its children at the botanical gardens today? At the gardens? <laughs> no. Oh, we do. Already we can hear their shrieks, their squeals of joy as they hurry home. I don't hear anything. Ah, but you do. You simply haven't trained yourself to give attention to so minuscule a sensory stimulation. It seems unimportant to you, but it is important to us. Heightened hearing, the sense of movement caused by the slightest of sudden drafts on the skin. They provide for us some of the insights you gain through sight. <laughs> Ladies, I am amazed. Simple facts, nothing more. Nevertheless, <laughs> I am impressed. Ça fait dix ans que sur le chemin, j'étais bien sûr. Didn't you believe us? Just testing us, Frankie boy. Now, what say you just lean back again? leaving our bags right where they are. We're blind, Francois, not helpless. So I see. And just because we can't see is no reason to take advantage of us. I am sorry. I don't know what, it's just that I... Uh... Oh, don't add insult to injury by trying to tell us why you had to do it. No, no, no. So why did you do it? I have no explanation, only excuses. Oh, we have no reason to hear those. So the reason for the thievery, Frank? I need the money. Ooh, do I detect a change in style there? No use continuing the Francois charade. You, my dear Evelyn, were right all along. I'm just Frank. Plain Frank. No attempt to explain? I've just been making excuses. You need the money so desperately. You would stoop to robbery? Yep. <laughs> Very well, then. Take ten dollars. I'm good for ten as well. You want me to take ten dollars from each of you and return the rest to you? Why not? We trust you. Oh, no we don't. <laughs> Though we can trust our senses. Those heightened senses don't just apply to sunsets. Prenant son vol, l'oiseau m'a dit, il y aurait de l'amour. Why don't you keep your money in your purses? Our purses? Why almost anyone could just come up and steal them, <laughs> for example. <laughs> oh, point taken. Though somehow I thought your money would be in much danger. Okay. So I have taken uh, one ten from Anna and Evelyn, you didn't have a ten. So I have taken two fives. I know that. You do? I wouldn't lie to you. Look, I'm sorry it isn't more. But we're on fixed incomes, you know. Why would you even give me anything? Because you need it and we have it. 
and some, and we can share. You ladies are something else. That better not have been you, Evelyn. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, are you gullible. Heightened senses. To tell one bill from another? You can't be serious. Dead serious. As serious as when I took the 50 from Anna and your 220s, Evelyn. <laughs> oh, but I'm just kidding. Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> you do really are something else. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh.